In earlier videos, we took a look at uh, painting textures on your meshes, on your sculpts in Mudbox. Uh, in particular, we looked at the paint brush tool. In this video, we'll take a look a little bit more at how we can use stamps and stencils when painting textures. Uh, and we'll also look at the projection tool. So if you remember, when you want to start painting a, uh, a texture, first thing, uh, the best thing to do is to create a new material. Right now we're just using this default material, uh, but what I'm going to do is right click on the object and say assign new material, mud box material. And this will create a brand new material for me to uh, paint on this mesh. Within the settings of this material, I can, of course, make some uh, changes to it. We can change any of these uh, properties that we can see here, whether it's the diffuse, specular, gloss, and so on. After we've created that material, you'll notice that we, in fact, have it in our object list. It's called material here. Uh, we could rename it. And we can return to that material anytime we want to change any of these base properties for this material. Uh, I highly recommend playing around with these different properties to get to know and understand them. For instance, with specularity, remember that you can adjust the uh, specularity, the specular color here, uh, to get different effects. You can adjust the uh, strength of it. as well as adjusting other properties such as gloss, incandescence, and so on. Once you've created your material, uh, you can start painting on it. And just like with sculpting, you can also paint using layers. In fact, you have to use layers. And if I were to select the paint brush uh, and start trying to paint on my mesh, I'll get this create new paint layer. It prompts me as to uh, creating a layer, and here we have to determine what kind of, what channel of our material are we gonna be painting. Now, you can see that you have all these different choices here of diffuse, specular, gloss, and so on. Diffuse refers to the color, so that's where we'll start. Notice I now have a layer here under the paint section of layers. If I start painting on it, it will use whatever color I have set in the color channel over here on the right. If I were to change that color, it'll paint it in whatever color I, I select. And of course you can uh, choose uh, different colors besides just these kind of base uh, colors here, uh, the primary and secondary colors here. Uh, you can also select colors on your color wheel, as well as adjusting the saturation of the color, as well as the value or brightness of the color. Now I'm going through this information very quickly because uh, this was all covered in a previous video. Uh, what we didn't cover were uh, using stamps and stencils with your paintbrush, which behaves very similarly to using the stamps and, st uh, the stamps and stencils with the sculpting tools. So uh, I'm going to make my brush a little smaller, and let's try out some of these stamps here. And in fact, we'll pick something like, let's say, these leaves here. Okay, so I'm going to move the light a little over here so that uh, this hot spot is more off to the side. And you can see that I have my paintbrush selected and I will be using a stamp. And if I paint, 
what you should notice is that it is in fact not using the color from uh, the stamp here, but it's still using the color that I have assigned it. Perhaps so that we can see this a little better, I'm going to go back to my uh, material here and I'm going to uh, adjust the specularity so that we have less specularity on here. Now, of course, when painting, uh, just like with when sculpting, we can mirror. And we can also change our stamp spacing. As you can see, for something like this kind of stamp, uh, it's probably going to be much more effective if you increase the stamp spacing on it. Now, just like when you're sculpting, you can randomize its uh, different settings here. We can randomize the rotation of this stamp as well as its placement in both a horizontal and vertical. We can randomize its scale as well as its strength. Now I'm going to turn off this stamp so that we get this. And in fact, I'll go ahead and decrease my stamp spacing once again uh, so that we get a more solid stroke. And we'll take a look at the stencils. So I've selected my stencils here and we can select any one of these stencils and of course paint through it. And that's a little bit about stencils. Now, where I find stencils to be particularly useful are with this tool here, the projection tool. So if we select the projection tool, you'll notice it even gives you a pop-up saying that it's intended to be used with a stencil. Uh, let's try it out. So I'm going to tell it not to use the stamp image here. Uh, and we will select a stencil to use the projection tool with. Now, looking at the stencils uh, and to really demonstrate how they work, I'm going to pick one of these that has a color on it. In fact, this one that is called grass. And let's see what happens here. So if I paint on it, you'll notice that it doesn't just use the, the value here to paint the uh, color that I've assigned to my brush. It is actually using uh, the color from the stencil itself. Uh, I'm going to hide my stencil temporarily. Uh, you can see, however, if I toggle between the two, you can see the stencil and you can see how we've painted directly through it to get this grass uh, texture on here. Um, what I want to do is try the uh, flood from camera. I want to show you what happens if I flood from camera using that uh, stencil. So let me activate the stencil again. We'll go ahead and say flood from camera. Uh, I'll hide the stencil, 
It looks pretty good. It looks like it's covered the entire mesh. However, remember it flooded from the camera, so these areas that are not actually pointing uh, to the camera will get stretched out. Here, let's uh, try it on this side now. We'll go ahead and flood from camera. And you'll notice that these areas are not getting uh, affected. However, this can be a useful technique for quickly covering up uh, a mesh. Uh, and then perhaps we could still come in here and fill in those areas that get stretched. So that's a little bit about using uh, stamps and stencils with some of the paint tools. We looked at the paint brush as well as the project, uh, projection tool and how we could use stamps and stencils with those tools. As you can see, you have a lot of stencils to uh, explore uh, as well as a lot of different stamps to explore. Uh, however, in the next video, we'll take a look at how we can create our own stamps and stencils for use in Mudbox. I hope that this video has been helpful for you, and thank you for watching.